If not for the Most High and also the ancestors. Amen. Wonderful time. And I'm going to go back in time and let y'all know I spoke in this very room. This was now about 2015. 2015. I spoke in this very room and it was tied to an event. And when I spoke, I asked a question of folks. I said, and at the time, there's about 100 people inside there. All adults, all adults, no children, all adults. I had asked a question. I'm going to say, how many of y'all remember Springfield? And these folks that were in the room, they were all from Savannah, Georgia, and from Chatham County. And when I asked the question, I thought they would mess with me because nobody responded. <laughs> I said, how many of y'all remember Springfield? I'm asking myself, how many of y'all remember Springfield? Later on, one hand came up and another hand came up. It was a mother and a daughter. Now, some of y'all probably saying, what is Springfield? Springfield is on Gwinnett Street. Springfield goes from, from Styles Avenue going on up to uh, May Street, Springfield. Springfield, you can walk from um, MLK, from Bolton to Walbrook, you can walk all the way down through Springfield to Carver Village, as we know it today, and going on to Cloverdale. That's correct. Springfield today is now I-16. Springfield was an economic center right here in Savannah, Georgia, a black neighborhood that had Victorian homes, that had businesses right there. In fact, the story of Springfield is this, or one part of the story. Um, I had a man by the name of Bubba Denegal. Correct. Bubba Denegal was involved in um, um, activities. <laughs> Bolita, stuff like that. Y'all know Bolita. Y'all call it lottery today. Georgia lottery system. Now y'all call it today. I'm just being real kidding. That's y'all call it today. Then also, um, Bubba Denegal was involved, but then you had somebody else called Sloppy Joe Bellinger. Right. Sloppy Joe Bellinger had a club called the Flamingo. At a gas station, all right there on what we know as Gwinnett Street. The Flamingo also was a meeting place for the Chatham County Crusade for Boaters with a man by the name of Reverend Jose Williams, a man by the name of Big Les Hankerson, Henry Trash Brownlee, and Benjamin Van Clark. That's what they met at. They met right there at the Flamingo because what happened, the church has said, we do not want y'all meeting inside our places because it's just for the NAACP. We don't want y'all because y'all are a little too radical. But also I tell them what was happening too is that because they were the people. They were the young people. They were the ones who wanted action. They wanted to see change. They were the ones who said that we cannot sit back and be quiet anymore. We need change right now, so we need to be out there on the forefront. See, sometimes people don't understand. You can use various methods to get to where you need to go. And you bring the synthesis to that. And we often want to say, no, it got to be like this. I tell people, no. Everybody has a role to play. And it gets us to, and we will say, that promised land. So what happened at the Flamingo, one of the times at the Flamingo, uh, there's a man who will come there uh, for a meeting. His name is... Andy Young. Same Andy Young as mayor of Atlanta. Same Andy Young with Ken, who was a negotiator, who did the stuff behind the scenes. The same Andy Young that become a, uh, a diplomat. That Andy Young, when he comes to Savannah, the folks, these young people who are there, those old people who are there, the middle-aged people who are right there, say to Andy Young, listen, we got an issue going on, we're going to have a night march. We're going to have a march. You're going to be a part of it, Andy. You're not going to sit in the background. You're going to be right up there. What is said to be the only time that Andy Young is ever arrested during the civil rights movement is in Savannah, Georgia, tied to the Flamingo and the Chatham County Crusade for Voters. That's the only time. Why I throw that out there? Two people are like, what? So again, it's political. But also something, a part of the legend of Sloppy Joe Bellinger, because of a leader and all of that, Lottery, they said that he'll be loaded with money. And people on West Broad Street, when I said people, governmental officials knew that then that he had money. And that um, some people tell the story, they said that the city of Savannah actually borrowed money from Sloppy Joe Bella. <laughs> but that's what they're going to say. That he, but then others going to talk about that people did go get money from him who was involved in law enforcement. Yeah, but you understand that. 
I throw that out there to say economics is important to us. Political power is important to us. And give you another story. <laughs> Places, some of y'all y'all know of a man called Nelson Mandela. Oh, yes. Nelson Mandela. When Mandela gets um, out of prison in the ANC, the African National Congress, when they now go and meet with the, uh, the Dutch boys there in South Africa, this is like this. You are the Dutch boys. You are the ones who have the power in South Africa. So Mandela and he sit down with the Dutch, with the Boers, with the Brits, and they begin to talk about what they want. They begin to talk about what they want. They want to have one vote for one person. They want to be able to have the economic, I mean, they want to have the political power there in South Africa, in Zambia, some people call it. They want to have that power. So what then happens, and they negotiate about it, and they got great negotiations going on. And so they talk about it, and they talk about it, and they talk about it, and they talk about having the vote, having power. And the Dutch Boas, the Brits, all of them like, we can't tell about it. Wait a minute. We came here, we were scared. We had a fear. We, were, we had a fear. All these actors are talking about is political power. We were afraid that they would come inside one of the economics. That they now would want their fair share, which is basically most of South Africa <laughs> economically. The, the Dutch Bulls are like, okay, whatever y'all want me, give it to y'all on the political side. Man, that was a fail with regards to the economics. That's like even today in South Africa, you got poverty running rampant in South Africa. And people are not going to talk about this here. I'm not the first one to talk about this. Others have discussed it. They said that Mandela and Phil, because all they focused on was about political power and never about economics. And the Dutch boys, the Brits, all of them were stunned. Because they said that's what they thought. They were more economic power and also political power. Yeah. They ultimately failed in South Africa. And they're trying to rekindle that right now. The stuff that you hear going on is tied to that because they didn't realize that some three decades later, they failed. Now, what I tell folks, and I've done this in presentations and done this in my class at Savannah State, I said, you can have political power and economic power. Uh, I, gave, I gave an example too tied to this. I said, here it is, you got a city. This, this, I said, this is a fact pattern, a fact pattern. You got a city that's majority black, have a city that has a black majority on city council, a super majority, in fact, on city council. You have a black mayor, you have a black city manager, a black clerk of council, a black police chief, you have a black fire chief, you have even a black DA for all the Chatham County. And you also um, have a majority of black folks as registered voters in this place right here. Wow. And I said, so, again, you're the majority of the city. But guess what? That city has poverty running rampant. But all that right there. But then also, you got the economic potential that's happening right there in the city. You got millions of dollars coming to the city based on the industry that's right here. That you have people who may have just a high school education can make six figures. Six figures. Six figures. You got all that right there. I said, what should be happening in that city right there? You should see black millionaires out the yin yang in that city. You see policies encouraging that for women and minorities. You should see that right there when you got something like that. And with the economic potential that's right there. And then I told folks, I said, guess what? You can have all of that, you can have the political and even the economic potential, but psychologically, psychologically, if you don't have this right here, if this is not together, that means nothing. Because on all of this right here, you still behold, you feel beholden to somebody else. You feel that somebody else is better than you. It's not just you can all say that uh, Julius, Renee, or Marcus, that they got the best water, but you're doing the same thing. 
I'm using an example. You know, they say, their ice is better than the ice over here. Yeah. You know, they got the chewy ice. Y'all just got regular ice. <laughs> <laughs> so psychologically, if we're not together, we still lose out. And that has happened to us. That has happened to us right here. And some people think, oh, it's not just Savannah. It's Chatham County, Bryan County, Liberty County, McIntosh County, Glen County, Camden County, Nassau County, Duval County, St. John's County. We're going to take it throughout this entire country. Same story, but we focus on us right now. And this has happened to us, and it is a problem. There's a problem. We are not, we feel beholden to other people. So right now, we have the potential right now, this new day right here, this new day for us right now, to right the injustices. And it's an injustice, an economic injustice that has happened here, a political injustice that's happened here, a social injustice that's happened, even environmental. So you don't realize all that goes together with regards to the environment. From sanitation and all of that, with regards to water, all that goes together, all hand in hand. It's about being holistic. And I tell folks, we have to rectify this right now. Diversity and inclusion, some people don't understand. They tend to think about one group of people coming in. Well, no, it's about you now, bring about equity. Not equality, equity. Writing the wrongs, writing what has happened that has become a problem for us in this city, in this country. Writing it because what Sabrina talked about, that is real. Because I told folks this um, four years ago. I said, there's a browning of Chatham County. And people didn't listen to me. There's a browning of Chatham County. But what you got to do, you got to make sure, though, that that browning of Chatham County, that people have like minds. Understand that their stories are all the same, that we're all connected. Because sometimes what we're going to do, we're going to isolate them because yeah, they got the chewy eyes. Y'all just got regular ice. Sometimes you need to have that regular ice because some of you can't have the chewy eyes. That diversity. You gotta have that. But then some people isolate them, think that no, y'all not like them. And that has happened for us. That has happened and it is real. And we gotta fight that. The day is not here for us to make that change. We gotta make the change because we got generations coming after us. And now, Sabrina says something, I'll throw it out there. Um, you know what people do? When they give you stats, this is what happens with our stats. When, they, when I give you a stat, I'm letting you know what will happen as long as y'all follow this course right here. But if you want to change that course, then bam, we come with something different. And that's what's going on. People are not looking at it a different way now to attack that. We don't want to see the browning of America. So we got to develop some other schemes and plans to thwart that. And that's what's happening for us when we talk about diversity. Sometimes we do not take diversity and say that, oh no, we need y'all to be diverse. We need to, we need to basically weaken what y'all are doing. So they say we don't need to have a coastal Georgia Minority Chamber of Commerce or an African American Chamber of Commerce or a Buford African American Chamber of Commerce is trying to dilute you all because again, your economic power, I said potential is right there in your hands. Then you couple it with your, your psychological self-esteem, your self-esteem, woo, you got to go. And I didn't know that somebody was going to be here because I got thrown them out there. Didn't know. I should say a couple of people right here did not know. This woman right here to my right, your left, Attorney Joyce Griggs, businesswoman, entrepreneurship on her head, popping everything out. She was going to do it all from her law practices in Effingham County, Chatham County, Liberty County, Camp, I mean, Glen County. Law firms, doing this long before Kent Newton and all of them. Long before all these other groups, but that's what she had. She was doing, a black woman doing that. And then some of us, psychologically, not together, we like, who she thinks she is? That's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. she thinks she is? What is she doing? Who she thinks she is doing something like that? Then, somebody else did not know, well, I saw a pop up, heard another name, heard, Renee, Renee, says, 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 so, so. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Renee, I apologize. You know, sometimes I slip. <laughs> then, bam, because, see, Dr. King and Mosley, she and her husband got a business. 
But then also, they were doing something too. The two of them, psychologically, they were developing young minds to understand, to become empowered. They were that other component. They were that other component to what was going on. The psychological, the economic, and now also, I mean, political, psychological, and economic, all together. They were doing that peace. I call it peace. Yeah, that's what they were doing. They were bringing it all together. And so, again, seeing y'all, that's why it's so crucial for us to have an understanding about who we are, about what diversity is, and not have a shame in doing this. Then somebody else surprised, Julius Hall, Julius Hall. You just out there putting stuff out there right now, not having a chance. Speaking of it, as he said to me so eloquently right out there, he said that it's not about me. It's about the people. That sends shivers through my entire body when I hear that from someone, because that's what's needed. Because, oh, go back to Sloppy Joe Bellinger. One thing about Sloppy Joe Bellinger, they talk about Sloppy Joe, he took care of the people in the community. He got money from the people, from the Bolita, from the Georgia Lottery, excuse me. He got the money from them, but also made sure to take care of people's needs at times. So again, same thing, a voice for the people. That's why I said shivers through me, because again, understand it. But also understand that how some of us miss the mark with regards to that. The day is for us to now take it, to seize it, and run with it. Because guess what? When you get it, you're not going to do anything, I'm going to say that's going to be foul, something wrong. You're going to be the ones that are going to enhance it, in fact. But people tend to shout and fear you because of those stats that they think that you're going to do something that's going to be harmful to them. As opposed to not understand, you're going to enhance it. So yes, yeah, some people don't have a concern that if you have African-American male or even counsel. As long as you do my bidding. But then what you got to do now is going to tell us that we're going to enhance all of us. We're going to enhance all of us. And what was so fun, let y'all know that I had to speak in the same room last month. Um, and it was for the Mo Mobile Alabama Chamber of Commerce. And they wanted to know what can they do to now bring about heritage tourism right there. I was a part of the panel. And so the thing that I did not share with them, at one time they had a black mayor there in Mobile. The business people there were like, yo, not African Americans say, he's all right for us, he's all right. They didn't have a problem. In fact, told somebody else, don't run against him. Do not run against him. He's cool. He's cool with us. So that goes exactly what Sabrina was saying. That's something people don't have a concern, but sometimes because psychologically, we don't feel empowered. We think, I still got to be filled to hold it to you. I just need to get whatever I can get. I should be happy with whatever I get. No. You not got to educate them you know, on how we will be enhanced for all of us. As I shared, folks, I told folks in January, I said that, check this out. If you have a living wage, guess what I mean? People have more discretionary income. Because they can spend more money with your business. But instead, business people say, no, don't have a living wage. It's going to hurt us. No, it's not. you got more money. Somebody got more money. That means they got more money to spend. Which means that you get more money. But see, we play these, these games with them. I'm not saying stop. That verse is for us to not come to the table and speak with eloquence, like Julius. With like all of us, we are able not to give the information to not enlighten, because some of them are compartmentalized. And that's what happened for some of us. We get compartmentalized also. No, that verse is about you not coming to the table, bringing your beauty to the table, bringing the rich tapestry all together that you look at and like, wow, this is great. That's what we got to do. That's what we got to do. That's our responsibility. Diversity and inclusion is about us not coming and sitting at the table as equals and bringing our information, our knowledge that some people totally ignore. Do not let them understand that we are not going to cause a synthesis for us to grow even larger, which you can even imagine. But see, some people have a fear and don't want diversity, don't want inclusion. And I throw this last thing out there and share with you all this. When we started Day Clean the African Soul, Day Clean Journeys, our tour company, um, Mayor Otis Johnson at the time held a minority uh, a women's business uh, expo, where he always do that. And so we at what was once called the Radisson, we were right over there. And so what happened, we have a person who gets up and he's eloquent. He's eloquent. He was magnificent. And people are like, Principal Derek Muhammad got up there and spoke. 
But what I tell folks, the most illuminating person that was there wasn't his speech was basically like kind of monotone, kind of relaxed, and he got up and he said, um, Savannah is the second largest metropolitan area outside of Atlanta metropolitan area. So he said, what I'm about to show you, these stats, is not pertaining to the Atlanta metropolitan area, but it's outside of, it is Albany, you know, Albany, make sure you remember, <laughs> Albany, Albany, <laughs> Augusta, Columbus, Macon, Savannah. So here goes Savannah, so we'll be right up there, right after Atlanta, so we'll be right up there when it comes to minority ownership of businesses, and uh, I should say, in particular, he focuses on black people, black businesses. He says Savannah should be right there, but say, the startup of businesses, Savannah's at the bottom of the state of Georgia. Wow. Black ownership of businesses, Savannah at the bottom. And then he went ran it all off, and he began to say, Oh, I didn't tell y'all the name, but I'll tell y'all the name of the person. He's an economist that was at Savannah State University, Dr. Alan Mayu. Alan Mayu was in what we used to call the School of Business, now they call it College of Business Administration. Alan Mayu presented this, and he's Ethiopian, but he presented that. I said he's just monotone, straight, gave it to you. He said, all this right here, he said, something has happened here in Savannah, in Chatham County. I don't know why, I don't know what it is. He said there needs to be a further investigation regarding this, why black people are not only business, having business like across the entire state of Georgia. He said, I don't know. And see, I don't know put it out there honestly saying that. I don't know why it's there. I'll just give you the stats. So somebody else did not do an investigation. And when I was sitting there and I listened to Alan, Dr. Alamayu, I was like, ooh, shoot. <laughs> Alamayu just put it out there. And you heard what I said, this is when Otis Johnson was mayor. So you see how long ago that was? And I, that's why I'm going to say, let y'all know, I failed. I failed. Because I heard it. And you know what I expected? I thought somebody was going to pick up the ball. No one picked it up. So that meant that because I knew it, like I said, I saw it. I should have pushed that more. I should have said, I would say to people, I tell people at sporadic events, I was going to say it when we're talking personally, I would say, Dr. Alamayu said this right here, but what should have happened? Jamal should have taken the charge and ran with that and put that out there and even reminded Dr. Johnson about what would happen. I said, what Principal Muhammad said was illuminating and it was joyful, but what was more illuminating was what Dr. Alamayu said, and we are at the point right now that Dr. Alamayu had put us, that told us about, and we're even worse. And I failed because I did not take on the charge. When I heard it, I thought somebody else was going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I thought somebody else was going to do it, and I utterly failed at that. So I'm a failure. But guess what? We now have the opportunity to correct the failure. I didn't go to remedial classes now. <laughs> then I told me that I could retake that test. And that's what's happening right now. Coastal Georgia, Vima, all of us now, we are now, we taking the test to bring about positive change right here, that we have true diversity and inclusion. Because as I say, Alan might put it right there in our face. We did nothing. Right now, we can make the change. And that's why I'm so glad to be here this morning to be able to share that with you all. So again, it's about us coming together as one. Peace and blessings.